the dental issues are the most common which we see and the owners notice uh, with their pets because they keep checking them every day so the first thing what they see if they notice or bed smell or some kind of a discoloration of the teeth. Sometimes you know they can have these discolorations because of some damages of the enamel of the tooth but very often in most of the dogs is because of accumulation of uh, tartar on the on the teeth. Dogs basically uh, as I said, they are individually, uh, you know, predisposed to this problem. Uh, first, because of food. Second, of genetics. Third, the uh, individual composition of the saliva and bacteria in, the, in each dog's mouth. Small breeds like, uh, I don't know, Pomeranians, um, uh, Chihuahuas, Pugs, uh, Greyhounds, uh, Italian Greyhounds or other ones, they're more prone. I've noticed that they have a very pointy faces and the jaws are very narrow. So I think uh, they seem to have a much more uh, bigger accumulation of tartar than the rest of the dogs. Basically they accumulate the tartar which goes under the gums causing uh, inflammation of the gum and parodontosis. It means it shrinks the gum up so the tooth starts to move. In that area, in this pocket, you know, food goes inside, uh, fur from licking, from cleaning themselves, and basically is the causing constant inflammation, and therefore the, the smell is coming. Once you know the, the gum is uh, uh, rotten, or means it's, uh, you know, has uh, gone up, it means it's uh, reduced. In that case, nothing much you can do because the, the tooth has not been held by the gum, so it will fall uh, out anyway. There's a special products now which are antiseptic products, you know, for massaging the gums to place on your finger and just you can apply. Those are very enzymatic, you know, so they stay inside the mouth for six, seven, eight hours. So they're special like a type of a glue. So basically they stay on the gums. So by massaging, we are keeping, for example, the circulation back. Uh, the tartar cannot be removed on this area, uh, on this way. Normally, this is only as antiseptic. We have a special finger brushes or other brushes which can be used, but I think it's used mainly in the bigger dogs because the small dogs they have a very small teeth, so it's very difficult, you know, to clean these teeth. Yeah. There's a special liquids which you put in the water, which is preventing from forming the tartar. For some dogs, works. For some dogs, not. On the end of the day, you know, once the tata will be built up, in that case, in a certain percentage, it's very difficult to remove it by brushing. Because in that case, you know, you can also, you know, uh, damage the gum by rubbing so hard, you know, and then the, the, the gum will get inflamed. Or, for example, the other option is to use, uh, to go to the vet and to get them scaled, you know, which is done under anesthesia. It's not as deep as for the, uh, for serious surgery, so it's quite safe procedure. Later on, they get polished uh, also um, with a special brush, and so basically the tartar doesn't build up. Normally, you know, people first will see the, the smell from the mouth of the dog, and they will see, for example, there's increased tartar because the inflammation which the tartar is causing is changing the smell from the mouth. So they need first or to feel the smell, or second to open the mouth and have a look. They can sometimes see a lot of brown, you know, plug, you know, which is on the on the gums. Sometimes we see very red gums. Sometimes we see, you know, receding gums, you know, which basically allowing food to go inside, and therefore the smell is there. Probably we'll have a look first to see, for example, what it requires. We'll see if we have any loose teeth, which might need to be re removed, you know, while the dental, because if there is also parodontosis, shrinking of the gum, it's no point, you know, keeping this tooth, even though it's a healthy tooth, if it doesn't stay in position. Because very often, once the tooth starts to move, in that case, destabilizes the next uh, uh, tooth and the gum and etc. So we normally we prefer this teeth, you know, which are rotten or they don't have support by the gum to be removed, the gum to close, and we have a remaining healthy teeth, right? And then on the regular basis, maybe once a year to be checked, you know, if they need to, to be scaled or not. Yeah. that's uh, reasonable. For the small breeds we see you know sometimes they require even twice a year to be to be checked but we try not to anesthetize them as frequently even though they are very mild uh, anesthesia but still better not to be anesthetized you know for uh, uh, too often. Mm -hmm. 
Same thing with cats. <laughs> they have also very difficult, you know, to brush cat's teeth. It's impossible. So for the cats mainly, we only keep them on the dry foods, you know, in order to mechanically remove, you know, the plug, you know, by chewing the, the, the dry food, the pellets. Or basically they're cleaned, you know, by, by the vets. The main thing, you know, it's the prevention for, for all these things. So it's better, you know, to scale them on time, especially the small breeds and to keep, you know, the, the gums healthy rather than to wait too long because later on we have a drama because, you know, most of the teeth are loose. There's no point staying, leaving them inside. So people get very frustrated that dogs come back with no teeth, right? Mm -hmm.